hardworking. He was funny. He was sly. He was quick-witted, generous, happy, determined, realistic. And he loved traveling, music, and family. He was a great man who's had a great impact on my life, and I miss him deeply. He would say from time to time that he was going to create one way or another to pass me or my family a few bucks, because it was what he had done for somebody else. He purchased my first couple of cars for me, and he let me buy one or two from him at a steep discount. And uh, there's a certain purple station wagon that I bought from him at full price, but it was worth it. He helped me to buy my house, my education, and food for me and my family on many, many occasions. And I'm indebted to him forever. He was a brilliant salesman. Many of my earliest memories of him include him talking on the phone to customers. <laughs> he was doing telecommuting before it was a catchphrase. When he was on those calls, he taught me a lot. He taught me when to throw in a joke. He taught me when to get back to business, when to regroup in a conversation. He was a master salesman. And he did great things with these skills. He would often recount to me that Elvis had died in the bathroom on the toilet. He'd be happy to know that he had gone out like the king. His mind was always going. He'd analyze the monetary possibilities of someone else's assets just to stay sharp in case he ever found himself in the same situation. My father, if nothing else, was prepared. He always had a joke on his mind, if not on his lips, most of which were in the form of a reply to the last thing that came out of your mouth. I doubt I will ever again meet a man so ready to have someone else laugh with him. He would, without a doubt, have given me anything. <laughs> anything in the world I asked for. Including the shirt on his back. He might ask me if I was serious about the shirt. But if I was, so was he. And off it would come. He was one of the most generous people I will ever meet in my life. He was happy in his work. He was reluctant to retire, and I feel like it was one of the hardest decisions of his life when he finally did. He loved the chase, and he found it in sales. The chase escaped him in retired life, except for a few side deals concerning cars and properties. He once asked me to make a plaque to hold all the various keychains he had collected in his travels all over the world later in life was one of the only things I felt that I had made, artistically speaking, that had given him real pleasure. And I cherished that he asked me, and I was able to deliver. He quickly ran out of space on it, and now I marvel at all the places he's been. When I was a teenager, my father and I had very little in common. In fact, I'd said it until I got out of school and got a real job. It was hard for us to share any real common experience. When I started getting paychecks and he knew I'd be okay, we were able to talk. He got it, and I got it, and we found each other spiritually, and we're able to build upon that relationship almost every day since. But he and I were always able to meet with music, and whether we were talking about how much we liked Pink Floyd or Frank Sinatra or the Beatles, we kept that thread open throughout most of our most separate times. He cared deeply for us. And most of what I am today is due to what he and my mother have provided for me and my family. He was a great man and his legacy lives on in me and in each of us. I will always love you, Dad. And I'm glad that we had the opportunity to tell you so many times. Thank you.